Hello, as you can tell the baby's up, I'm geared up. And uh Welcome to the vlog. I'm cold now. Yeah, freezing cold. Oh, it's frost, zero Celsius. Red hot last night in the bed, comfortable as hell. Had to get out a couple of times, but not to fish. Yeah, Mills's bait has worked. So I open up my bag and come to a surprise. He's alive with the sound of music. Yeah, obviously I put that um, Brian Mills bait, didn't I? Obviously down his uh, garb, obviously once it was all a bit skin, and, well, not skin, it was just all bone, wasn't he? Well, he's grown back. I'll show you a reverse way of doing this. So, get your bait floss. Now, this is if you're using it with like a ring. Yeah, obviously on your uh, rig. So instead of putting the it through there and then obviously pulling it up and then obviously putting your knot at the end, Right, try this. It might make it easier for you because you don't have to tie, well, try tying the knot as well as getting the bait, um, bait um, stop in there as well. So, right, so that and a loop. So just a section there, just loop it up. Okay. Jam that on there, slide this down. A bit tight. It's bloody cold, isn't it? It's frozen. Right, so that's all I have got. Okay. Then get your bait stop, um, bait stop, pull the loop down, put your bait stop inside, so you're not having to tie knots and then the bait stop come out and you're fiddling all over the place. This is the only reason. Now these ones are obviously sit inside, so I can trim that up now. Just knot that bait stop out. There we are. Let's make sure that is in the middle. Yep, jobs are good in. And that is it. And then all I do now, I slide that through the ring and I tie the granny knot straight to the ring. Easy peasy. Through there, so the middle rod is basically, let's have a look. It's actually one just off of that. And then the second one is actually going over this way here. I've got to be careful because obviously if the lake itself is filling up and then um, if anyone decides to have those pegs over there, then I've obviously got to bring them in. So there's no point in putting loads out because it's, it'll be wasting the boat and that lot. Yeah. If I go with a blank, I go with a blank. If I go with a fish, I go with a fish. So we'll see. And that is not go home with a fish, bear in mind. I'm not a foreigner. So catch and release, that's where it is with this game. Catch and release. I've left it all open, so I've got plenty of room for netting both sides and that lot. Normally I'll push the pod to one side, but then your right rod goes and you under the both rods and etc. So I'll put them bang in the middle, brought them back a touch, and then, uh, yeah, it's just a bit easier for obviously playing one and that lot. Obviously if one comes there, uh, comes on the munch. Hmm. Well, as you can tell, it's nice and sunny. Uh, leaves are all pretty much... If anything, it's not so much winter, I'd still say it's like autumn, but it's like an early winter, if you know what I mean. So it's the 9th of November. So it's still technically autumn fishing, but it's chilled down, isn't it, this uh, winter 19? Chilled right down. Yeah. I've got a new body warmer. Yeah, it does the trick, this. Yeah, And it's not a fishing one, no, it came from George. I think it set me back about nine quid, seven quid, something like that. Obviously in the clearance section. Because that's what us fishermen do, isn't it? We look at the clearance section. <laughs> because we're tight buggers. <laughs> we spend the money on that. Not on this. <laughs> Alright, so this is what we're on now. Still a running lead. Obviously a bit of tubing on there. Yeah. But it's still all running and whatnot. I've got two on square dice leads and then obviously one of these dumpy distance as well, which is a uh, two, two and a half ounce. Can't remember where it is without obviously chucking it on some scales. And uh, basically, obviously we've got a uh, like a heli bead going straight into the quarter boom, same as before. But the difference is now I've changed the up down to a size ten, which is on a micro barb with a bait screw 
and obviously just a standard 16mm krill boiler. And as you can see, once it's pulled, obviously the hook obviously sets. So in theory, it should actually turn on, on the hand. Not every time it's done. Yeah, there we are. So, yes, it should do some damage. Now, you can put some putty on the spoon if you want to, but obviously I've got two crimps on there, and for a bottom bait, I don't really need it. But regarding the heli beads, some, some of the tubings are quite tight going in there, but this one's actually not. Just literally line it up into the hole, push it in there a little bit more like you would with a normal leg clip slash tail rubber, and there it is. Leg comes down to it, obviously stops, and it can't go no further. You know, you've got to force that in, it won't go in. You, you can't, I don't even think you can force that in there on that rig. And the good thing is, is this does actually spin around the actual uh, rig tube in. Now it will untangle itself, obviously, once the hook is pulled. So it is a resetting rig, this one. Parcel delivery, DHL, I've not ordered out. What are you here with me? So the guy in the corner, who was actually fishing, who was a fish tops in that corner. Oh, reach that, no problem at all. Anyway, yeah, there's a little uh, right. Oh, hey, oh, which one's this? Which one is it? Settling. There's a writing rod. Keep an eye on that. Watch that tip. Watch that tip. It wasn't me. Oh, it could have been me on the. Uh, Nah, it's not me. I'm just stamped on the floor, see if it were. Probably just rolling off the shelf. Thought it might have been me on the concrete slab, just moved it. But well, it's not. Oh, it could be that bloody crayfish again. I've just thought where it is. We'll have a check on that. I don't think there's nothing on it, like. Well, it was obviously not because it would have been ripping off, wouldn't it? But it could be a cray. Could be a crayfish. And the camera's all wobbly. That's better. Oh, concrete slab, but I moved them on purpose. Do it want me? Right, so you've probably seen it there. Obviously, I'm feeling the lead down. Now, if you don't know what feeling the lead down means, it's basically obviously you're looking for that hard donk. Obviously, once it hits the bottom, some people just literally leave the uh, bail arm open, just let it go, and then obviously just tighten it up. But if you feel the lead down, if you're feeling a hard surface, it gives you a nice little indication, obviously, what sort of bottom you're fishing. And that lot where if it's if you don't feel anything it generally means that you're in either really thick soft silt or you're in heavy weed so i don't think there is no weed in this lake to be fair so it's all right but normally obviously you cast it put your bail arm back on or trap your line either way obviously with your finger and then your rod will actually come forward because obviously that's the leg going down so your rod will come forward and then you'll feel it donk it will literally go donk obviously through the rod and or it will just stop either way but it's generally don't feeling lead down that's how you do it so cast it in i have a bail arm on and so i have a bail arm on or just uh hold the spool so obviously the line can't come off no more rod down rod down rod down rod down and then it will stop you've hit the deck that is it if it's hard you know you're all right that's it. There we are, feeling the lead. Oh, we have put a carpiac in here. Right, so a couple of people's at it again. 
Yeah, play music all pegs. Right, I can't I can't work that this one out. Right now, if you move in like three or four, five, six, seven, eight pegs away, then yeah, fair play. Okay, but what I can't work out. Say I'm fishing this peg, I ain't catching nothing. I'm gonna to move to the next one. Uh, why don't I just right? Okay, it's not happening here. I'll just cast my rods into that peg. Anyone comes, fair enough. Obviously, you got to obviously take them out. But why can't you just do that? Or fish for liners. Spread the rods out, which is what I like to do. Yeah, spread the rods out. You're fishing for bites, but not only that, you're fishing for liners. Right, so for the guys, what obviously fishing for liners, if they don't know what it means. Right, a fish hits your line, that's a liner. So if you chuck your rods out as far as you can say get them, or to the far margin, right? If you get a beat, but it's obviously not on your on your rig. Obviously, with a fish, it's going to pick up your rig generally, and fish, and it's going into it. So you get a run. Right, a liner. It could be like one or two beeps. So if you get in the liners, the fish are there. Yeah. So all you got to do then is just bring your rods close to the bike. A little bit. You don't have to cast. You don't have to um, pull your rod out and cast it back in. You just literally wind it a few times. Now, it's, yeah, fair enough. If you got a um, blanket weed or anything like that, then you might mask your rock over. So then you might have to cast it, redo it. So just obviously knock a few yards off it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until you obviously find the fish. Yes, my right rod. I keep getting the odd beep on it. Now it could be the liner or it could be the crayfish. I am generally going to say it is mainly crayfish. And also the lead what I'm using on that one because the two what I've got out on the left and the middle are on square leads and they're not moving and they're perfectly fine. On that one I've got a dumpy distance on it because it is a bit like an egg box it will roll about a touch. I expect that so that's more than likely what some of it is but once it's settled it's fine. So I'm just going to leave that one I'm not even going to bother putting the square lead on it so if I keep getting problems with it then yeah I'll change it over. But up until now, the rod's in the water, it's got a chance. Taking it in and out, in and out, in and out, ain't it? I've got to keep buggering it up. But yeah, I can't understand why to go from this peg to the next peg. Fish that one, nothing happens. To go from that peg to the next peg. Oh, God. The fish will come to you eventually. Yeah. They'll, they will come past you at some point. Now, I've not put all my bait in one spot. I've spread it, which is the way I prefer to do it. I like to spread it. I put some over there. I was going to go with a heavy bait approach, but I'm like, this time of year, it's not really worth it. So I changed my mind on it. So um, all I've done is get the trusty old catapult out, wherever that's gone. And you know it's like with one of them. They go all over the place, and that's what I want. Yeah, if I'd have thrown a stick, fair enough, I could load up 15, 20 in there at a time, psh, all in one go and they're all going out there. But I don't want that. I want them to be dotted between the three rods. So all the three rods, really, are on the far margin now, so I can fish for liners as well. So I've got the opportunity. I'm both tight line on them, and yes, they're over there. So if I do get the liners and I'm not getting nothing else, then I can just step them back until I introduce them on the fish, but I put them on that far margin because I know with the deeper, obviously last January I come, they're up and down there like a yo-yo. Nothing in the midwater, up and down there like a yo-yo. So, that's what I'm aiming for. I've not bothered bringing the deeper or the bait boat, so I'm not messing about with that feature anyway, because I ain't got them. But I just can't add some people up if you know what I mean. Ring a ring of floats, a pocket full of baits. Blue trousers. Yeah, new trousers, look. Thought I'd treat myself to some like foreign camo, if you know what I mean. It's meant to be DPM, but it don't look like DPM, does it? Not with a colour scheme, no. Do I look sexy? Does it make my bum look big? <laughs> that's literally all I've got and that is all I'm putting out and I'm going to scatter them to and from so I'm going to put them out in twos at a time 
and just scatter them all the way across. So instead of just putting a load in and all down and closer, I'm just going to scatter them from where I've seen that cart bosh all the way down to it. And I'll do it over here so I won't play a mic again. Right. Two boilers. That's in line with that one. Two boilers. So I'm just going to keep repeating that. And I'm going to go all the way across. One boiler. Thought that was going on the bank, man, that one. So that means a bit further. So that was right on the willow, that one. Well, I wonder what's on this today. I wonder what's on that today. Let's have a look, see if I can get it home from one handed. Yes, 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 bacon cheeseburger. That's what we're going to be having. Mmm, that sizzle. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Right, I need two hands, so I've got to pour it down. Right, so you know what this moment means? We've got one. Oh, I'm going to have to alter these lights. They're a little bit bright. Let me just knock them down a touch. A bit too bright. Yeah, this is what I mean about flare-up. Now, I don't want to be pissing around too much. Obviously, we've got a fish what we're playing with. There we go. It's only just come out of the water anyway, so it's not exactly too bad. There you go, see what I mean? Test it. Right. Let's lose the likes, otherwise it'll look like... Well, I already am a plonker, but we know that anyway. Somehow managed to wipe the left rod out. Yeah, it was the right rod what went, where it might wiped out the other one as well. There we are. Beautiful. Absolute stunner. Come on, let's get you back, mate. You're ready, aren't you? Right, so we've just had a fish and obviously I had to bite my line off now. That means I've got to retube. Mm. Yeah, it's always a horrible job, isn't it? Especially when you've got 15 pound line and you've got three millimeter tube. Mm. Right, this is an old one. I did it ages ago, but obviously for the newbies, obviously what I'd seen me do this. Right, so you've got your rig tube and get yourself one of these. It's called a pole threader. It's what obviously the match men use. And all you've got to do is push that down. You know it's like getting the line in there, you're biting it, pulling it, you're chopping it with your teeth, blah blah blah, blah and you just can't get it to go through, can you? Not right, anyway. So look, whereabouts it is. So it's nearly there already. Nearly that. Right, we're out already. Right, that's it, it's out, look. So now all you got to do is pull the tubing through until you meet the near the end, because on this end, it's got like a little diamond thing on it. And what you do, you push your line through there. There you go, look. you got one of them on it. So you push line there through that. Well, go, be quite generous with it. Don't be, don't be stingy. Obviously, push it through. And take it through about a foot. Okay. Once you've done that, start to pull your tube in down. There we are. And then, ding, 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 all the way. And guess what do you know? It done. It is done. It is easy as that. Now I'd like to bite some off because, that, like I say, that that last fish caused me carnage. I don't know how the heck it did it. Right, I've got my rods quite a distance apart, and I was on my rods, and it just went left this fish it shot 
left like crazy. So now I put my lead on, like so. This is obviously for my running rig. I need my little buffer bead. I'll put it down somewhere and I don't know where the heck I put it. There we are. Feed that through. So this is me tying up my running lead. That's that through. Then I've got my rig. And yes, it was sticky krill what worked on this one. Standard five turn grinner. People's got different ways of tying this up, but at the end of the day, you do get the same result at the end of the day. So round the line five times. Oh, where has it gone? And then back through the loop, what obviously you made on the first one. Put it down. Knotting it up. I always like to bite it, just in case you always do get that little bit of a slip. So now I'll pull my me, me bead obviously over my swivel, like so. Then I'll bring my tube in down. And then I'll push my tubing into that. Like so. And that's done. Rebait up. So that bait off. The bait screw. Oh, get a new bait. Push it in a little bit, then bang down the centre and then screw her on. It worked. Test the hook. Yeah, hook's perfectly fine. Guess what? There's no wrong with that hook. I don't need to change it, but if I do, it's on the size 11 spinner. So I can. All right, let me find my head torch, which is on my nugget. I'm going to chuck this one back out there and I'm going to put my food on again. Right, I haven't been up long, just looks have made a brew in that lot. But why is it when you're fishing, you can always wake up without a problem and that lot? And then when you're at work, like, oh, I can't get up. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It is true. When you're fishing or going fishing, that's it. You bang, and you're up, and you're happy to be up. But when you're going to work, you're like, oh. <laughs> oh. So, nothing more last night, as you know. Otherwise, it would have been filmed and pictured or whatever anyway. It was quiet last night, it was just that one. At least it's not a blank. Yeah, at least it's not a blank anyway. All I've got left now, my rubbish bag, which is there. What I'll go and get in a second. And I've destroyed the place with just footprints only. Footprints and tire tracks. Look at that. I had the bivvy up over there on the grass bit, obviously pretty much behind the car. And there we go. Unfortunately that can't be helped this time of year. Other than that, like I say, go down here, look. We'll go down where I've been as well. All I've got to do is just take my leads out of my pockets and actually just put those in the uh, rod bags for next time. So here we are, look. Nothing down here. Nothing, not, nothing, 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 nothing. You won't even tell that I've been down here, to be honest with you. Uh, well, I ain't hardly ever. But what I'm going to do, the lead what's done all the business, well, it's only one fish, isn't it, really? Let me just dig it out. Here it is. That's the one. What worked? Homemade. That's the one what worked. And the bottom's not this colour, to be honest with you. Mad, isn't it? Absolute mad. Anyway, it's not the lead what catches the fish, it's the angler what catches the fish. It doesn't matter what tackle we got, obviously what end tackle we got, it's the angler what catches the fish. Yeah, the biggest thing really going is watercraft. That's the main thing. So, I've got literally, look at the state of my shoes. Look at that. So, uh, get these changed obviously before I get in the car, but I am literally. There's no one down on this side, and there's only one guy down in this corner. That is it. Crazy.
Well, that's what you get for this time of year. It's brilliant, isn't it? You don't get hardly any one here. So, I'm signing off now. Until whatever I do next, whether I'm going to be in the shed. Oh, whoa. <laughs> nearly went over. <laughs> oh, that was a bit slippy on that bit. Here's some rubbish bag. There's not a lot in it, but that can go straight. I'm getting not tied up in that in a minute, and obviously I'll get rid of that on the way home into a bin. Yeah, where it belongs. So once again, nothing but footprints, and we've had a fish. So chuck us a thumbs up, or a thumbs down, either way, and then uh, bang the bell. If you want to, that is, obviously, if you don't, then don't. So, I'm going to get in car, just make sure I've not put nothing on the top, because that's my normal habit. Nope, nothing up there, so that's it, I'm going home. But what I might do before I do go home, I'm going to pop round to the other lake, see if, obviously, the uh, bailiffs are still fishing, and see how they've done. So, alright, see you later, team.